So, you've heard of this little town of Deltona, Florida, and maybe you've heard something good or something bad about it. Well, I've lived and worked in this area for many years, and I do see both good and bad sides of this little suburb of Orlando, and today I'll be sharing some basic information about Deltona, as well as those good and bad sides from a local's perspective. I'm Chuck Shaver of the Shaver Group with Keller Williams Heritage Realty, and today I'll be addressing several topics that you'll need to know if you're considering moving to Deltona, Florida. First, what is Deltona? Well, Deltona is the most populous city in Volusia County with around 95,000 people. It's primarily just a large residential community made up of mostly single-family residences, most of which are situated around one of Deltona's many lakes. Deltona sits on the north shore of Lake Monroe in Volusia County, just north of Sanford and south of Deland, Florida. It sits along I-4 about 30 minutes, that's without traffic, north of Orlando and about 35 minutes west of New Smyrna and Daytona beaches and about two hours from the, from the west coast beaches of Florida. Deltona is basically one great big residential community and doesn't have a wide variety as far as variation of income levels and styles of homes. In the early 60s, the Malco Brothers marketing, most of which was targeted towards northern states, attracted people to Deltona for their small, low maintenance homes here in Deltona. Today, these homes are still popular here and many of these two and three bedroom homes are less than 1,200 square feet and have a similar style about most of them. Today, Deltona is primarily made up of these Malco homes and three and four bedroom homes, most of which are on quarter acre lots and run from, I don't know, 1,200 square feet up to 23, 2,400 square feet. There are a couple sections of Deltona that are a bit pricier, but today the average home here in Deltona is selling for just under 300 grand, which is a good value when you consider that just across the St. John's River Bridge to the south of us in Sanford or Lake Mary, a similar home would cost you probably an extra $50,000. In the last 90 days since I recorded this, the lowest price home closed at just 40 grand and the most expensive home in all of Deltona closed for just $561,000. There are just a few homeowners associations here and I believe only two or three gated communities in all of Deltona, each of which may still be priced just a little bit higher than the other homes in the area. There are just a few condos here in Deltona. My favorite is the Lakeside and Edgewater condos down off the south side off of Providence. These are currently maxing out around 180 grand, but it's really the location that I love most about these. The Sunset Gardens condos are not too far from there and they're close to I-4 as well, but I don't personally think they're as nice as the Lakeside or Edgewater condos. If you want land, maybe you want some room for some horses, well, Deltona just doesn't have that much. Out on the east side is Summerfield Farms where you can get some acreage, maybe 10 or 20 acres, but as a whole, there just isn't much in the way of anything for you to spread out here. If you're looking for land, you'll probably need to head a bit further east into Osteen where it's a bit more rural, and it's priced pretty well out there too, and it's, just a, it's also just a short little ride from Orlando. It seems like Deltona has someone building a home on just about every single street. Most of the building being done here is done by small investors, but D.R. Horton is building out Cortland Park down off of Doyle on the southeast corner of Deltona. It's a community that I believe is supposed to have about 200, I think 197 homes, and they start in the 360s, and I believe they're going to be finished up in the summer of 2023. Thinking of renting an apartment? Well, Deltona has very little in the way of apartment living. If you're looking for an apartment, you really may be better suited heading down to Sanford or even up to DeLand or over to Orange City. However, Integra Miss is a nine-building, four-story apartment complex of about 301 units that's scheduled to be completed up near the Amazon Fulfillment Center off in North Normandy. Deltona has very few manufactured homes, and I don't think they would allow you to put one in here anyways. There may be a couple around. I don't believe there's any mobile home parks uh, or even any RV parks for that matter. So let's talk about business. As I noted earlier, Deltona is really just a residential community. Yes, there's a Winn-Dixie or two and two or three public grocery stores. There's a Lowe's and a few restaurants. Shout out to the Cocky Rooster, it's my favorite. But here in Deltona, people usually head over to Orange City or Deland or down to Sanford for restaurants or shopping. There really isn't a downtown or a business district here at all. The Amazon Fulfillment Center opened up in 2020 and that's brought a ton of jobs to Deltona. It's a huge place with like 1.4 million square feet. In that same area is the new Halifax Hospital and a movie theater. However, by the time you view this video, things could have changed quite a bit as there's a good bit of land clearing and chatter about some new business activity going on up off I-4 up on the north side of town next to Deltona High School. One thing I do love about Deltona is the parks. They've got a ton of them. West Cryle is probably my favorite. They've got baseball fields, indoor and outdoor basketball courts, a splash pad, 
playground, racquetball courts, and all kinds of cool stuff. Dewey Booster, or maybe it's Dewey Boster, I've never figured that one out, is another one that's really nice, and I've spent several Fourth of July celebrations there. There's even a really cool skate park here in Deltona. The Cross Volusia Trail down on the south side runs from up into land, and it's supposed to run all the way over to the east coast. It's a great trail to walk, bike, or rollerblade, or whatever you do. And Green Springs is a nice little gem along that trail that's a good little place to just chill out and just enjoy life in the shade. The Lyonia Preserve is a great place with about 360 acres of trails running through the Florida scrub, and there are these endangered scrub jays that will fly right up to you. It's great. Of course, there's a bunch more. This just gives you an idea of what Deltona does have to offer in the park area. There are several reasons people would move to Deltona, and I'm not even going to try to cover all of them. Many people move here for the weather. Our coldest weather here is usually in January, when we may get a freeze or two, but the average low is around 48 degrees, with average highs in January around 70 degrees. That sounds great, right? But in July and August, the average overnight lows are in the low 70s, and the average highs are in the mid-90s. Sometimes it'll hit 100 degrees. Yes, that's smoking hot. But so many people here have swimming pools. We have a ton of springs with 72 degree water just gushing out of them. And the beaches are just 30 to 40 minutes away. So it's really pretty easy to get relief from that heat. Many Deltona residents commute to work down to Orlando, Sanford, or Lake Mary. And the ride isn't too bad, although that traffic down there can get ugly. In Deltona, we don't pay too much mind to what time of day it is because the traffic just isn't much of a thing here. There are tons of restaurants and shopping just 15 to 20 minutes away in Orange City or Sanford and being able to have your toes in the sand on the beach in under an hour is really pretty nice. Deltona is just outside of Orlando and just inland of the beaches, so if you're freaked out by hurricanes, the distance between Deltona and the beaches really does make a big difference. Disney, SeaWorld, and all the under other Orlando attractions are just under an hour away as well. The cost of living here in Deltona is pretty good, although it does seem like it's picked up a good bit in these last couple years. We have no state income tax, and one older article I read indicated that Deltona was one of the 10 lowest tax rate of the 50 largest cities in Florida. Some research I recently did showed that Central Florida sits just below the national average for the overall cost of living too. So, I've talked about a bunch of great things about Deltona, but why would someone not move here? Well, first, there's just nothing to do here in Deltona. People live in Deltona and do things elsewhere. You may have picked that up earlier when I noted that everything to do was close by it, but that's because, again, there's nothing to do in Deltona. I also noted that the overall cost of living was low, but the gas taxes here are among the highest in the area, according to that Kiplinger's article I spoke of before. One thing that I personally hate about Deltona is the spaghetti bowl of streets. There's almost nothing that goes straight from one point to another, and after being in and around Deltona for over 20 years, I still use my GPS when I go almost anywhere here in Deltona. Now, it's true, those of you that know me know that I have no sense of direction, but I never go anywhere in Deltona without my GPS, and that just isn't the case in other nearby towns. As I record this, Deltona's residents are zoned for three high schools, Deltona High, Pine Ridge High, and University High. I believe there's three middle schools, Deltona Middle, Galaxy Middle, and Heritage Middle, and there's probably seven or eight different elementary schools. However, zoning for these schools is always changing, so if you need certainty with any school information, check out the link that I've provided in the comment section below. There's also some private schools here in Deltona, and Daytona State College has a campus uh, up off of Providence Boulevard right next to City Hall. Now what about crime? Is it a safe place to live? Well, I'm not an expert on crime rates, and I encourage everyone to do their homework online. I'll include a link below of what I believe is a pretty good resource for determining crime rates in any area, so check it out. As you can see, Deltona is a bit different from the neighboring cities and that it has both good and what I consider to be some not so good characteristics. If you're familiar with Deltona, share your thoughts below as it helps the community overall. Like any area, there will be raving fans and there will be haters too. So if you're thinking of moving to Deltona or if you have questions about the area, Feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below or just reach out to me directly. Of course, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.